Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a full step-by-step -step guide showing you how to replace the EGR valve on this 2006 Audi A4 B7 and it's a 2 litre TDI. This one's actually my own car. It's the first time it's let us down in about 70,000 miles that we've done in it. We're on 170,000 on it now, just over. I'll just show you the fault codes that we've got recorded. Did actually have some, um, did actually scan it the other day and I've cleared the fault codes. Uh, only one of them's come back which is in the engine ECU, which is PO403 EGR circuit. Now, when I scanned it the other day, did actually have PO408 in there as well, which is EGR sensor B circuit high. Um, I was, I'm just using the top down scanner. I always do a full code scan with it. We've got a couple of other codes in there, which are just relating to um, telephone transceiver in there. It's in two different ECUs. Um, but the main issue that we've got is this EGR fault which is stored in the engine control module. Now the symptoms that we've got, the engine warning lights on and it's actually in limp mode, it's got no boost and sometimes it is, it is boosting sometimes and then it's just shutting back down into limp mode. Um, so it's pretty, it's sometimes intermittent, intermittent but over the last day it's just got to the point where it's not boosting at all. I'll just show you a new, got the new EGR and if you check the links in the description below I'll put links to a new valve and where you can get them from. This valve comes with a new gasket. Now sometimes these can get really badly carboned up and you can get away with just cleaning them out. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've got a valve just in case. Uh, with the two codes that I've, fault codes that I've got there, I'm pretty sure it's relating to an electrical issue with the valve. So it's the first time it's let me down. So I just wanted to replace the valve anyway, even if it is at the minute that it's just really caked up. So there's a few different quality valves that you can get, but I'll put some links to some choices on there as well. Now it's quite a straightforward job to do. Um, you don't need to use a ramp, so I've just got it over the ramp, but it's really easy to do, um, not bad to access at all or anything. So first thing I'm going to do is just remove the top cover, then you run you through everything a step at a time. Now just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. I've got a full play playlist on the B7s. I've done quite a few repairs on this one and a few others as well. Uh, you might want to check them out. There's a timing belt and water pump on there, the oil pump drive. Uh, quite a few other issues on there as well that you might want to look into if you've got one. Um, but uh, basically we've got the EGR valve is located here. We've just got it's a four bolt fitting. I think it's three or four, sorry, just for the main EGR valve. We've got two pipes that we're going to have to, uh, two bolts that we're going to have to release to get this pipe off the side there. The throttle body goes onto it first, and then we've obviously just got this hose there to get off. So, um, but the first thing we're going to do, just to get us um, some decent access to these bolts there, I'm just going to slack, this is a solid metal pipe. I'm basically just going to take out that 10 mil there, and just on the underneath of the this bracket there, there's an, this pipe, sorry, there's another bracket there with a 10 mil on it as well. So we're just going to undo that. 10 mil there just to allow us a little bit of flex on that pipe so just undo them two 10 mils to start with and if you just with this style clip there you can just pull that back with a flat bladed screwdriver i'm just going to pull that pipe get that out of the way then we'll run you through everything a step at a time after that Right, now that we've got the hose out of the way, we've just got this undone. You do actually only need to undo the 110 mil, just this top one, and that will actually give you enough flex to get that out of the way, just to access them bolts there. Um, but after this now, we're going to need to undo three bolts. Basically, there's three bolts holding the throttle body on. Now, two of them are shorter ones that just hold the throttle body to the EGR, but one of them, this one just a bit lower down here, actually goes all the way through, goes through the throttle body, through the EGR, and into the manifold there and then there's just one more it's just a little bit hidden you can just see the head on the bolt just tucked in there that's all but once you get underneath here it's really easy to access and the only other thing we need to do is just take the connector off a standard volkswagen style connector you just want a little flat bladed screwdriver just to um put it in the clip there flick it back and then you can pop the connector off so just get the connector off get these three bolts undone now remove the throttle body and then we can get onto the EGR after that I'm 
So we've got all the bolts out for that now. So that's your one long one and your other two are a bit shorter. Yeah, but the throttle body does have a seal in it there. Now obviously while you've got it off, sometimes it is ideal to replace that seal. Uh, but if, if it's really flat and it's not sticking out at all, you definitely want to be replacing it. But we're going to have to reuse that one tonight because I haven't got another one. Uh, while your throttle body's off, it's always worth just giving it a bit of a clean out as well. Just getting some of that oily residence out of there, that's all. So while it is off, I will just clean it out before we refit it. So next job now, just need a 6mm Allen key for the next bit. I'll just show you. Basically, we're just going to remove this pipe here now as well. So you just need to get these two Allen bolts out. And again, there is actually a gasket under there as well. I'm going to try and salvage that because we're hoping to reuse that one tonight. I thought some, some EGR kits come with all the gaskets. I didn't actually realise that I've got this one and I'm ready to set about it. But it's only come with that one main gasket. So we're just going to have to reuse that one tonight. Right, so we've got the two bolts out there now and the gasket's actually stayed quite well stuck on this pipe so I'm not going to disturb it, I'm going to leave it stuck on that pipe at the minute. And the next job we're going to do, we've just got a connector on the um, EGR there, same style connector as on the throttle body, so we're just going to flick the connector off and we're just going to undo all the main bolts for the EGR housing now. Again, most of them are fairly accessible, one there, another one there. Obviously one of them we've already took out, which was the big long one. And then I think we've just got another one just on the back edge underneath it, that's all. So I'm just going to get all them took out. And again, they're the same. You want a Torx 30 socket for them. As you can see, that's the EGR valve out now. Not too bad to get off at all. Just the gasket fell out there with it when I took it off. And as you can just see, looking inside it, there's quite a lot of carbon build up in there. Um, but this isn't really too bad at all for an EGR valve. I've seen these in a lot worse of condition than that. And I was fairly confident that this one has actually failed electronically rather than just being that badly carboned up that it can't actually move the valve. So. Um, but all I'm going to do now is just give the surface on the bottom of the manifold just a little bit of a clean up. Just scrape any excess carbon off there, just get that out of the way. And then we can just simply refit the new one with a, uh, with a new gasket. Now I haven't got any torque settings for the EGR, but they don't want to be mega tight. They do just want a little bit more than a light nip on each of the bolts there. So you just really want to be running them all in gently then just, giving them, just run around them all and just give them a bit of a nip. But I'll just fly through putting everything back together now and we'll just clear the fault code out and we'll just show you that it's okay after we've cleared it. Obviously when I did the fault that I've been having this one it does sometimes clear the code out and take a little while to come back but if I give it a run I'll know that it's fixed the fault because it was near enough going into limp mode straight away. So, uh, But yeah we'll just fly through it quick and just run you through the diagnostic machine after. You do really always be replacing this style gasket on your EGR because it's like a metal crush style. So obviously once it's been used and crushed up, you can get away reusing them if you have to do, uh, but it is nice to replace them really. So everything's back together now. We've got the main connectors back on. Just going to connect this hose back up and just show you when you pop in your hose in, you're just listening for a little click and you shouldn't be able to pull it out once you've heard that sort of click into place. That's all. Um, we've just got to nip the uh, two 10 mils back up. As I said earlier on, you don't actually need to undo the low one there. You can get away with just the top one there. Just nip that back up now. Put the engine cover back on. And we'll give it a quick clear the fault codes, give it a quick road test and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault.
Right, so that's cleared all the fault codes now. I'm just going to give it a decent run, probably going to do about 10 mile in it. Um, and I'll just report back to you quickly. I'll just do another scan when I get back. I always like to do one anyway. It's just in case it hasn't flogged, um, like flagged any fault codes up as in putting the engine light on, it can sometimes store fault codes in the ECU. So I'll just do that, give it a quick run now and just let you know the outcome. Uh, so we just got back from road test. We did just over 10 miles. Uh, ran absolutely spot on. No issues going into limp mode or anything like that. And so once we got back, I've just done a full diagnostic scan again. And the only two codes we've got left in there are just them telephone transceiver codes just in the uh, in them of the two ECUs. But the engine ECU is all nice and clear. So the EG, EG valves fix the fault. Just thought I'd put the video together for anyone else with a B7 out there. They wanted to have a go at replacing theirs. If you want to check out the tools that I've used, just check the description below and I'll list all the tools that you need as well. But it's quite a simple job to do. Not too bad at all. Uh, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. And if you've got a B7, don't forget to check out some of them other videos on the channel. But yeah, see you next time.